I knew that I knew who was responsible for that attack on our own soil, and I just wanted I was out for blood. All right, zero zero four is in the fucking books. Done. Done with. Only took about two weeks to edit, <laughs> but um, it's nice to see you again. Yeah, well, it's nice to be back <laughs> out of uh, my dungeon. But um, yeah, we got all this new equipment to streamline the editing process, and uh, then we added two more camera angles and we had all that uh man he had some fucking awesome footage that we put in there that was really cool yeah that was really really cool it took a while to go through all that but man he him and his team must have had their helmet cams on the entire deployment because there's that much footage yeah did you have a helmet cam no we didn't I didn't have that when oh. I was running ops. I wish I did. I thought I had a lot of fucking material, uh, you know, with the throwback posts on Instagram and shit. Yeah. But uh, Nick has a metric fuck ton worth of material. Yeah. And uh, all kinds of stuff that uh, we couldn't put on YouTube, unfortunately. A little too graphic. <laughs> But I think it was I got good. a glimpse of that here or there. Yeah, yeah. You just, sorry about that. Yep. But, <clears throat> but but it was a good time. It was. It was good to see him. Yeah. I think it's been like three years. You know. I was thinking about that too. I think it's been close to three. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the last time I saw him, I, I think the last time we hung out was uh, teaching that last class together in Okeechobee, Florida. And, uh, dude, Nick is, Nick was a hell of a teacher. He just, when I first started teaching, it was hard to, it was really hard for me to break the fundamentals down because it, it's, when you, when you get that advanced, it's kind of hard to go back to, it's kind of like teaching somebody how to walk. It's like, I don't, you just do it. Right. And, um. So he actually, I learned a lot from him as well, learning how to when you guys teach were teaching? fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, it was really, he was good. And, yeah. uh, but I, I'm glad he moved on, you know. Uh, he definitely seems a lot happier now. Oh my gosh, so, they're both like beaming. I yeah. mean, they're both like super happy. Yeah. They moved um, pretty far from Boca. Away yeah, they the moved city. out in the middle of nowhere, too. Yeah, they did, didn't they? It's funny. You know, the more, I mean, I, we already kind of know this, but the more guys that come out here that uh, jump on the show, everybody, I mean, you can really start to kind of see, like... Like connect the dots? Yeah, <laughs> we all kind of, <laughs> like, fit a mold here. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of similarities between everybody... And, um, yeah. Yeah, I've picked up on that. Did you? Yep, sure have. Well, you and Jillian did that podcast. Or we did do that podcast. I have not even been able to crack into that. I know. And I can't wait till you, like, start diving into that, though. What, you, what did you guys talk about? All kinds of shit. It like, was good. We I don't know, need... I know there is a discussion about him punching some dude in the mouth at a storage unit. <laughs> yes, there is that. <laughs> Who I'm sure deserved it. But. Yeah, from the sounds of the story, yeah. Yeah. But no, it was really good. And that's one of the things that Jillian and I talked about were the similarities between just the two of you guys. But after having a couple of guys and being here to see, you know, and meet them, there's definitely a, a bunch of similarities between all of you. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's going to be a really good podcast. So whenever you get around to editing that, that would be ideal. Let me stay out of the dungeon a little <laughs> bit. And uh, 
And we got our next guest coming, so it might yeah. be just a minute. A minute, but it'll be worth it. It's really good, and that's one thing that I do wish that um, we, Jillian and I sat down here, we did our podcast together before you and Nick, and if I could go back to that weekend, I would have preferred to sit down with Jillian after filming you and Nick, because we were here in the background doing the filming and whatnot, and there was so much from your podcast together that I kind of wish we could have touched on some of that, you know, in our podcast, so. Yeah. But it, it's still really good, you know. I think people are going to like to see the other halves of you guys. You didn't talk about me a lot in there, did you? Of course not. What's Don't there to say? Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. <laughs> It's all good stuff. All right. Well, I can't wait to dig in and edit that and uh, see what you guys did talk about. Yeah. But we got the clips coming too, the couple, those couple stories that Nick told us to warm them up before the podcast. Oh, yeah. Those are yeah. pretty funny. I don't know what order we're going to release all this shit in, but um, yeah. But I, I think we'll probably release that and then this and then... And then probably your thing with Jillian, and yeah. then it'll be the next, the next guy, but um, who we can't talk about quite yet. No. But it's going back though. I can't fucking believe how nervous uh, Nick was to sit in that chair. Yeah. I mean, he was. That's one of the first things he said when he, when they came up, you know, after we, uh, you know, did all the hugs and welcome to Tennessee and all that kind of shit, but. He was like, man, he's like, I don't know. He's like, dude, I don't. Um, he's like, fucking Don has 30-something deployments. He's like, Mike was at CAG and the agency and SF and Kennedy, mm -hmm. you know, had a, I mean, I can't remember how many fucking gun fights that guy's been in, yeah. but I, was, I mean, a ton of them. And I was like, Nick, what, I mean, and I'd known that he had fucking shot number three, you know, from when we were teaching together. And I, I knew a lot of that stuff, but I was just like, dude, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, I only have four deployments. And, and I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, dude, trust me, you rate, you overrate to sit in that chair. Like, it's a fucking honor to even have you here on this show. So don't. You know, don't fucking think like that. And, uh, and, uh, but now that it's out, I mean, he has an amazing story to share. Yeah. So. That was, uh, that was really f fucking good. Yeah. You it know, it really was. And, uh, the way, it, the way it got all put together, and, um, honestly, I, I don't, uh, it exceeded my expectations, and, and I learned a lot about him, and, and um, there's so much more I wanted to go into uh, mm -hmm. with them, but I mean, shit, we were, it was, I think it was like two hours and 50 minutes uh, once we had it all edited. And, um, but, you know, we skipped some stuff and, I don't, you know, just what a fucking badass, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I wanted to get to, but I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up um, because we had already kind of passed that point, but I, I think it was in the infantry and Jillian told you that one of the times that he was blown up with uh, that IED, that he was the only survivor. And, um, I mean, fuck, man. You know, that's... Um, yeah, you guys didn't even have time to touch on that. Yeah, well, I didn't know. I'm not shy to ask any questions, but, um, you know, I didn't know that until afterwards, actually, mm -hmm. or, or until we already passed that point when Jillian brought that up. But, um, you know, and even the phone call with Dan, you know, I mean, I didn't know that. And then, you know, when we were trying to figure out who the hell we were going <laughs> to... We awesome. were going to have call in... And that was, um, you know, when Jillian told, she told you that, right? Yeah. Dan. And uh, I don't know. 
I don't think Dan wants his last name out, but uh, 03 underscore OG. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Or 03 under something like that. Whatever. We'll put it in the link at the bottom. But um, <clears throat> but uh, I wasn't expecting that, you know, and, and uh, I was like asking him about, you know, you know if you have anything. It's always kind of weird because I had never fucking talk to him you know what I mean I didn't know who he was and it's got to be I'm thinking like this guy's probably like who the fuck is this dipshit asking me about (laughs) fucking war stories about Nick but he didn't skip a beat man he just went right into it and he's he told me about Nick slapping those fucking guys off the stairwell and jumping on the machine gun so that him and his uh squad could go fucking kill those dudes and they had the fucking youtube video that of, was crazy right yeah there was so much good footage uh, it was like perfectly synced with what he was saying yeah in the footage yeah um but but yeah dan told me that and i was like holy shit dude i was like and this was i mean no wonder he got fucking hand selected um, yeah twice but <clears throat> um man you know what a uh, that that made it too. Like I'm, it all made it, but I wasn't expecting that. You know, yeah. from the call, and I was like, "Fuck, man! Like yeah. this is gonna be real good." Well, remember when after that we took like a break and we all went downstairs, and Nick was getting like really into it because he was like, "All these stories and all this stuff is coming back." You know what I mean? Like after talking to Dan and like. He was saying how, like, you know, he's starting to remember all this other stuff, you know, that happened on his deployments. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think, um, I don't think we could have portrayed a Marine grunt gone soft any better. I mean, what a story. You know, he, it like fits the mold of what I think of when I think of Marines, um, which I think fucking badasses. That's what I think. And uh, Nick is definitely a badass. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we had kind of talked about this the other day that SEALs kind of fit. You know, they we're all kind of, you know, everybody has like their quirks and the things they're known for. And um, I um the word i'm looking for is, is it this, like stereotype yes okay yes every unit every branch every soft unit has a stereotype and i think nick in a good way is the fucking picture perfect um stereotype that you think of when you think of a united states marine yeah I and would, uh yeah. and i mean that with the most respect obviously and uh who do you think has a bad rap a bad rap? Yeah, like who do you think has like a bad stereotype? Is there one? I mean, we all probably have a bad stereotype and a good stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like good and bad with each. Yeah. Division. You There's could definitely say, I guess. good things about and bad things about every branch. There aren't bad things about Navy SEALs though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, maybe we'll talk about that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, everybody's got the good and bad. You yeah. Know? And, um, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, that was everything I was looking for. And, uh, and he was nervous to get his story out. Now it's out. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it was fun to talk to him on the phone after we had done the release and we were approaching close to a hundred thousand views already and uh he's like man he's like i am booking charters left and right and people are donating yeah you know so that he can bring uh veterans out combat veterans yep uh on his uh on his charter and uh fucking slay some bass which is cool as shit you know that is so cool that he's doing that yeah well I mean, I, he was paying for that out of his pocket, right. and uh, and now because he got his story out, and so many people can relate to it, um, they're supporting him, I and know. Uh, that's 
with all the shit that's going on today, you know what I mean? Every time we flip the news on, I about have a fucking aneurysm <laughs> to see something like that, you know, like a story like this that won out that was probably actually, you know, I mean, fuck, it was demonetized like right off the bat. You know what I mean? Which that pisses me off and I don't, I'm getting sidetracked here, but you know, I mean, here we have a fucking war hero trying to tell his story and it's being filtered for fucking political reasons. And that shit sucks. It does. But, um, you know, with all the shit that's going on in the news to see like, to put something like that out and to see the viewers donate, buy his merch, book charters, all that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, it restores a little faith in humanity. It does. And you start to realize, you know, like, the news is fucking bullshit. It is. You know, there are actually good people in the world. Yeah. They just aren't in the media. <laughs> and, yeah, and Nick's such a stand-up dude, and Jillian's a wonderful woman, and it's just like, to see them doing so much good, and, and to see how the viewers are also seeing that and appreciating it, that's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's a damn good fisherman. How do you know? I see all of his posts. I know. We gotta go. Yeah. He's, I bet he's really up the game with those gummy bears. Oh, that's true. That's very true. I mean, did you see that? He just pulled out like, <laughs> looks like a 20 pounder today. That must have been the cherry flavor. Yeah. Lured that one in. Everybody likes the cherries. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, the gummy bear sales have been like crazy. That's been fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for ordering the gummy bears. Yeah. They are fucking delicious. Yeah. I'm surprised I haven't eaten them all yet. I am, too. I put a good dent in them. It's pretty tempting to have yeah. them around all the time. Yeah. You know who else loved those gummy bears? Who? Douglas. Oh, dude, that dog was so fucking cool. He's really cool. How fucking funny is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> we have Griffin, little, yeah, little Griffy, the Brussels Griffon. The Brussels Griffon. Yeah. And they have a wiener dog. <laughs> a long-haired wiener dog. Yeah. It's cool. Named Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool because... And how about uh, <laughs> when Jillian showed us that picture of how Douglas sleeps with oh Nick? Oh, my gosh. And Douglas's fucking head is on the pillow <laughs> and Between the same the pillow <laughs> as Nick. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just cool to see. You know, everybody has the, uh, you know, the, the attack dogs. And those are cool as shit. But um, you don't see too many uh, soft guys running around with lap dogs. No. We wanted to film that thing where where we actually did like kind of like a mini show, I guess you would call it, with our lap dogs right. on our laps. But I wish you guys had done that. That would have been fucking hilarious. I mean, the whole time we were up here while you guys were filming before we actually, you know, hit record, Douglas was with Nick and Griff was with you. Yeah. Yeah. And then they created like a little bond. Griffin hasn't been the same since Douglas left. Yeah, he's all depressed and shit. He is. We gotta yeah. keep the gummy bears away from him. He had a new friend. He's eating his sorrows Gone. away. Gone. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. But, well, we got a peril coming. So maybe yeah. that'll cheer him up. That will cheer him up. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. He's a dog. He's gotta go easy on the gummy bears so he can fit in the new t shirts. Yeah. Well,. Yeah, so we got apparel coming. We're, it, that only took about, what, eight months to get back into, <laughs> <laughs> into the apparel game. But we made it. Yeah, what a fucking nightmare that's been. Yeah. But I think this one, this time, is going to go good. But um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm excited to see those go live and see people wearing the shirts again, you know? Yeah, well, you know, we got the next guest coming. And uh, I want to tell everybody who it is. I know. But we've had a couple cancellations, and uh, so I'm not going to. I feel like it would be jinxing it at this point. Like yeah. I'm just kind of nervous to. Well, COVID kind of fucked everything up, and we had 
a whole slew of cancellations. Yeah. And now it's back in the news again. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we lose some more guests, but shoot, I think we're booked. How many more guests do we have coming that are on the schedule? I think we're like five. Do we have five? I think it might be up? five. We're almost to like the end of the year because now it's July. So yeah, I That's think we're awesome. going to be booked till all solid people. Yeah. I'm like super stoked about that. And one of them, if it pans out is going to be our first non-military person on the podcast and that'll be it'll be interesting to see what the audience has to say about that i know i think yeah uh, but um that will be cool yeah but well let's wrap this thing up don't we have some questions from uh patreon we do have questions we have questions from patreon and instagram which one would you like first well, Patreon's the best, so we'll save the best for last. Okay. So from Instagram, Donnie Brook Fishing asked, what was one cool thing you learned about Nick that you didn't know? One cool thing I learned about Nick that I didn't know. I didn't know Nick loved the lap dog so much. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, I think probably the most important thing that I learned about Nick that I didn't know is uh, I did not know that story that Dan told us about him. Uh, I mean, I think that's just fucking cool as shit. And uh, I didn't know, actually, I didn't know about, um, you know, the ID and uh, that he was the only survivor either. <sighs> Had no idea. You know, and we spent a lot of time together uh, teaching, and uh, that just never came up. But, um, you know, that's a hard thing to live with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but that's, I learned a lot of things, but I would say those, uh, those are what, that's what sticks, sticks out in my, in my head. So. Yeah. So two things. You learned two things about on this trip. Yeah. Three. Three. Yeah. But. Hmm. Um, next question from Instagram is from Dylan Holzer. What criteria do you look for when choosing a guest? Uh, I would say it's a, well, that's we mm -hmm. to start with. But um, the initial things that I look for is. <sighs> I'm kind of, I'm just looking for somebody that, um, you know, the one I like doing the ones like Nick, you know, and Don and I, I like all of them, but when you can get somebody's story out that hasn't been heard yet and you're the first one to bring it out and then you watch, you know, the success that comes from telling that story on a platform of 500,000 subscribers. I mean, it's, it just makes you feel good. And, um, you know, we get, we get a lot of requests for podcasts and, um, of who people want, but I'm always kind of looking for the guy who's been quiet, who hasn't got their story out, who doesn't have a fan club behind them who hasn't, you know what I mean, told mm -hmm. their story eight million fucking times. I want fresh material. And um, one, because a lot of times people just don't have a place to get their story out. And um, not that everybody wants to, but it's, I, I like that. You know, it's something different and it keeps my interest. If I'm talking to somebody whose story I've heard 50 fucking times, it's, it's hard, you know, to keep interest in that. So, <clears throat> so I don't know, that's kind of, and then other than that, just, I um, definitely want a good person, you know, somebody that I think is a good person. Um, somebody that I like being around, you right. know, I mean, this isn't like the other podcasts where you just 
show up, hit the fucking record button, and that's it. I mean, we hung out for, what, five days before yeah. we podcasted? And, um, you know, when Glover was here, I think he was here for five days. Kennedy was here for three or four days. Don was here for... He was I here. think Don was here over a week. I think so. But, um, you know, and and it takes a minute, you know, to build that, to be comfortable sitting in that chair. And uh, so uh, we are definitely looking for somebody that we could, would like to hang out with, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's one of the things, though, that makes the podcast so good is they're in our home. We're having a good time. There, There's no rush to it. And um, I think there's just like this overall feeling of comfort maybe is the word I'm looking for, where it's just like they just want to open up. They want to share their story. Like it just doesn't feel like anyone's pressed for time or, um, you know, we've got this checklist of stuff to go through and, and then you're out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. It's a lot more intimate yeah. uh, than that. And then we so. have a good time once it's over too, you know? Yeah. That so. Was- yeah, Nick loves those fucking goats. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. I don't know if he likes the alpacas that much, but he loves the goats. And Jillian loves all of them. I know. So. Nick also liked the duck, though. He was getting a kick out of the oh, duck. Oh, yeah, he did like the yeah, fucking duck. Yeah, the way the duck would waddle. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Okay, next question. Uh, Malcolm Newton, and this one's from Patreon. Question for Sean. Was there any one specific moment in your career that you thought, what the fuck am I doing here and why am I doing this? That stands out to you? Uh, <laughs> like every day of my... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, all the time. Uh, I'm not sure which career, but yeah, you know, um, I'll give you an example. When I was on the SEAL teams, my first deployment was to UCOM. And the first part of that deployment, I did nothing but go to the bar and get shit housed. And hold on, real quick, what's UCOM? Oh, um, I deployed to Germany. Oh. Everybody else was in Afghanistan, Iraq, fucking Pakistan, getting it. And here's my dumbass sitting in fucking Germany at the bar listening to briefings like, hey, the guys in Afghanistan just killed like 125 people last night. And I'm like, cool, I probably drank 125 fucking beers, great. (laughs) So glad I went through all that training to be here. And at that point, I was wondering, what in the fuck am I doing here? And- um, That's a good example. Yeah, you know, fast forward to another career when I was teaching firearms uh, or gun training tactics, whatever. You know, and uh, I remember, I remember, you know, to be honest, it's a lot more fun teaching when you have zero following because nobody gives a shit who you are. Mm. They just want to learn. They just want to like take the knowledge that you have and to make themselves better. But then you start building a following and it becomes, what holster is this? What belt is that? What kind of magazines are those? What kind of this is that? What kind of barrel is that? What, what, who makes those sunglasses? What kind of shirt is that? Can I smell your socks? (laughs) You know, and, and I remember the first course that happened to, um, me, Nick and Scott were there. And that was another moment that I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know what I mean? Like I'm here to fucking shoot and teach people how to defend themselves and nobody gives a shit about anything but what brand nods I have on and what my shoes are and what fucking jeans I'm wearing and my belt and my holster and my mag pouches and and I I don't like that. Yeah, I distinctly remember that night when you came home from that I did not, where that happened. It felt really fucking weird. You were not a happy camper. No, and um, but anyways, so There's two what the fuck moments. You want a third? Sure. All right. Bring it. Here we go. Number three. Uh, I get like that sometime with YouTube, you know? Um, I mean, I guess I'm a YouTuber now. So, but yeah. But, uh, you know, when you put a video out and 
it doesn't fit the political agenda of certain people, it gets fucking censored and, uh, you know, uh, on all social media platforms. And when you put that much time into something like this one, you know, fucking two weeks I spent yeah. editing this damn thing and, uh, and it was worth it, you know, but we've put out a lot of content that never got any traction and it's because it doesn't, you know, it's not in line with uh, whatever agenda is going on at the time. And so that makes you wonder what the fuck you're doing here and why you're even wasting your time doing this shit. But um, luckily this was not one of those. <laughs> so right. I'm really and happy And you're not wasting your time because I see the emails and you see all the comments and everything and you yeah. help a lot of people too. And all the guys that sit in this chair and, yeah, you know, they all help a lot of people, so... Yeah, it's all worth it. I'm not talking about necessarily any specific podcast or anything, right. but there are videos, you know, that's like, man, yeah, like that was a really good one. Yeah, that was there was a lot of good information. Some of the COVID stuff we did mm -hmm. when we were giving information out on YouTube on what, how to prep and um, stay out of fucking panic mode and all that shit. A lot of those were being censored right off the bat, and um, it's crazy to me. And then for some reason they wound up taking off, but. So, that, yeah, there's three things, and uh, there's a lot more, you know. I know there are. So, but. All right, you want one more? What else we got? We got one more, and this is coming from the Blood Analyst. Oh. Yeah, you're familiar with this one. This is the uh, Blood Spatter? Yes. Blood sp Spatter Analyst what? and Forensic Scientist? That's the one. This from lady Patreon. is interesting. She's very interesting. So she has, she's, we haven't watched the Netflix thing yet, but she solved that big, uh, that big, what was that guy, like serial killer? Yeah. Wasn't uh, he like chopping people up and putting them in freezers or something? I'm drawing a blank. But it, it, I know the documentary on Netflix, but we have to watch it. But um, yeah. I'm completely drawing a blank. Well, we're going to watch it soon. And, yeah. Uh, it was a really popular one, though. Yeah. Like, definitely on, like, the little trending menu on Netflix. Anyways, she's a badass, and she solved that, and uh, which is fucking cool. So, uh, who knows? Maybe she'll be a guest on here someday. That would be really cool. Blood. I mean, do you think she watches Dexter? Uh, I would assume so. Do you think she does things that Dexter <laughs> does? I don't know. We should hide the saran wrap. <laughs> uh, if we have her out, I'm going to wrap this whole room in plastic and we're going to do the show in that. That would be cool. <laughs> um, okay, well, she has um, two questions here for, for you. Um, how long does it take to record an entire episode from start to finish? And how much recorded time versus how much time it takes the act... How much on the actual show? Oh. How much makes it on the actual show? That's a good question. Um, shit, damn near everything makes it onto the show. Um, I mean, there's very, I would say less than 5% of the f footage gets pulled uh, from the show. I mean, you know, um, and you can help me out with this because you do all the filming. But um, how long did we film with? Was that like eight hours? It was a long time. And I, um, I know with Kennedy, they've all taken uh, yeah. a, a minute for sure. Because um, Don, we, we had to take like a, a lot more breaks. Don, we had to pull a lot of footage. Yeah. Because but, it took us, what, three times? Three times we tried to do yeah. that. Three or four times. I think so. But um, I think with Nick, yeah, it was probably like an eight-hour day. Yeah. With all I the mean, gummy bear breaks, it would probably be about an eight-hour day. There was a lot of day. gummy bear breaks. Yeah. And a pizza break. Yeah. Yeah. Dog walking. But it's not all. So anyways, uh, a shorter answer would be 
Just about everything actually makes it into the podcast, even though we just said it's eight hours. That also includes sound checks, video checks, sound checks again, yeah. sound checks for a third time, getting Griffin to shut the fuck up and back in the crate, <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that. So, <clears throat> but um, I would say anywhere from five to six hours it takes to do uh, a full recording or five to eight hours, I guess, to do a full thing. But I mean, that's, you know, half of that's the lighting, the sound. I mean, we got boom mics, we got labs, yeah. we got three to four different cameras and uh, all the lighting, all, all that shit. So it, it takes a while to get set up. Right, and then with every break that we take, we end up coming back up and then kind of refocusing, yeah. brushing crumbs off, you know. <laughs> brushing crumbs off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot. Yeah. But, but it, it's totally worth it. Yeah. But yeah, it's not what you see is what happens when you're not missing much. Yeah. And uh, I, we even put a couple of the clips that you did miss on my Instagram, like us burping and and then we're in the middle of the show and I'm like, oh fuck, are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm over here fucking crunching ice cubes and uh, everybody else thinks we're recording, but, but yeah. What was the second question? Um, you pretty much answered it. How much recorded time versus how much makes it on the actual show? Oh, all right. Well, I guess that about wraps things up, but I hope you guys all liked 004. I think you're really going to like 005. Yeah. Uh, that person's coming out on the 9th of July. Fingers crossed. Yeah, f hopefully. Um, but I will tell them about, should I tell them about the pilot? The pilot? Oh. We might have a Vietnam yeah. F-4 Marine fighter pilot who flew over a hundred combat missions in Vietnam. And uh, I used to give private lessons to this guy. And uh, to be honest, he makes us all look like a bunch of pussies. So, but here's the real kicker with him. What? He's not on social media. Yeah, no, but you can't follow him. That's like the coolest part. And he owns part. a huge engineering company, so he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Unless you're gonna build a 50 story building in Miami uh, because of this show. He probably doesn't give a shit, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cool, you know. But um, I really hope he comes. Yeah, but I um, do too. Yeah. But yeah, we've got a solid lineup. Yeah. I'm super pumped. Me too. Me too. And but, to stay tuned for me and Jillian. Yeah. When we take the I hot can't, seat. I'll get on that. I'll get yeah. on that. I needed a break, but. I know. All right. Well. I hope you guys like 004. Sign up for Patreon. Buy gummy bears. Buy a hat. Get ready to buy a shirt. Rep the brand. And uh, if you support us, we will still keep cranking out content. So uh, thank you everybody for listening, for watching, and... I hope they like the debrief. We'll be seeing you soon. Yeah.